Hey YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. How are you? And for those of you that have come in, welcome. And uh, <clears throat> you saw my message there. Didn't have a certain icon appear. I didn't have a certain icon appear that uh, and it made me worry a little bit. Oh my God, it looks like someone jumped in with 1999 right off the bat. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> Oh my God. Very, very good. Thank you so much. Fishman Marcus, Convo Gang, Edgar, welcome. The Chubby Guppy. I love it. All right. So let's get, go ahead and get underway here. I have a few things to cover. First of all, uh, a shout out to, to two super chatters uh, last week. Jerry Martin. Jerry Martin, if you're there, uh, thank you so much. And Dr. Jade. Dr. Jade, thank you so much. And uh, if you haven't received your, your um, if you haven't received your little uh, pendant, the little uh, thing, <laughs> the little puffer fish from the co-op that is that that is uh, has been mailed, and you will be receiving it shortly. Thank you so much. And if that 1999 super chat is uh, is in the domestic U.S., uh, please send me your address. I have one more of those puffers left, and I will send it over to you. Okay. Let's see, Francis. Hello, Francis Arroyo. Okay, so uh, so thank you to those who did the Super Chats last week, and uh, very appreciated. And um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to start off here by uh, acknowledging also uh, Candy, Candy, who is the uh, the super the Super Chat Queen from Montana. She is our our moderator. She's the one that keeps things clean, and also. Uh, I want to acknowledge Denny. He has Denny's uh, Denny's Aquatics on YouTube, and also I want to acknowledge uh, Kevin Green, um, who has uh, KG Cichlids also on YouTube. Both of them will be moderating today, and uh, so I want to uh, jump right into a couple subjects. And um, first off, I want to talk about some of the comments that were made in the last uh, in the last live stream. Take up some of those. And by the way, for those of you who are asking about the autopharynx tetrastigma, uh, he is recovering. He's a very old fish, and um, I, I'm very happy to see that he's making some progress. Um, you know, if, if, he, if he came back and he wasn't quite as brilliant and beautiful as before, I'd understand, and it's, and it's, it's, it's a combination of being a bit abused by the other fish but also, um, hey Adam C, thank you for joining. But also um, the the fact that he is an older fish, and that happens. That happens. Sometimes people are uh, very very upset about a fish becoming uh, broken down. It stops to e stops eating. Its uh, it, its scales start to uh, lose some of their shimmer, some of their um, and and uh, they lose some of their color. They, they, they beat themselves up wondering what's wrong. They can't figure it out because other fish in the tank look okay. And uh, what you have is you have a, a uh, what you have is you, is you have an older fish, a fish that when you purchased it, you didn't really know what age it was. And so, um, and, and so that happens. But the autopharynx tetrastigma is in the little tank that you can barely, maybe you can see a sliver of it on the screen here. He's very active, he's eating. Um, you know he's he's in uh, you know he's in 10 gallons so he's not he's not doesn't have a lot of room um, if he does get healthier I'll put him in the hundred gallon and then we'll see um, how he does there he'll probably get the usual um, the usual greeting that that cichlids get when they join a tank which means he'll get abused a little bit and uh, hello multi tank addiction uh, he'll get abused a little bit and then uh, he'll settle in and perhaps uh, maybe have one good last run in his life, uh, you know, towards the finish line. Unfortunately, these fish do not live that long, and uh, uh, except in some cases, I mean, there's some, there's some front. What? How long do frontosas live? Kevin Green, if you're there, you know that. Frontosas go what, 20, 30 years? You know, so so if you're, if you're in your 60s, um, 70s. Uh, you buy a frontosa, there's a chance that that fish is going to outlive you. 
So you're going to have to, uh, thank you, Kevin, 30 years. So uh, with great care, 30 years. So if you're 60 or 70, you're going to have to put that fish in your will. Like who's going <laughs> to who's gonna get my front, you know? So something to consider. Uh, you know, I think I mentioned it in my uh, uh, old guys, old guys video. You know, what do old guys have to deal with when they have fish? Uh, is this fish going to outlive me? Coffee and cichlids. So, um, on that note, I want to talk a little bit about some fish that um, that if you buy them, uh, I, I strongly encourage you to consider buying them as a adult, as a colored up adult. And these are fish that um, I have purchased and I have waited and waited and waited and uh, in, in some cases uh, was rewarded, but uh, it, you know, with a beautiful blossoming fish. But in other cases, I was ultimately uh, frustrated because it never colored up. And I ended up, you know, ended up giving the fish away or selling it. And, uh, but because the fish takes so long to color up, you end up spending a year uh, in anticipation waiting and then sometimes you give up or you become frustrated. Now, there's, there's a, uh, several of them that I've had this experience with. And if you've had this experience, go ahead and share it in the, uh, in the chat because I'd like to know which ones this has happened with, with, with you. But for me, I have a, um, hello Chris, I have a, uh, I have a Maduka orange flame tail. This is a male. He's definitely a male. He shows the signs of a male, but he's a Maduka orange flame tail already at the size of where other uh, peacocks would be showing color. And yet he continues to be uh, uh, dark and drab. They're, they're starting to form some patterns in his dorsal fin, some in the tail. Um, he's, but it's taking a tremendous amount of time. In hindsight, I wish that uh, the, the flame tail had been purchased as an adult. And I, and I still might just do that, uh, just because I love having a flame tail, uh, a flame tail in my peacock collection. So uh, another fish, uh, Malawi hawk, uh, a Malawi hawk. Uh, and thank you so much, Adam C. Uh, a gar, the Malawi gars, and uh, th these fish, uh, can can go on and on and on and on, and uh, and and even have like a a, a, a slightly r rounded anal fin that starts to take a point, and so you're not really sure if it's a male or female, and what do I do with this fish? Do I keep him? Do I keep him away? I did have a fish, a spectabilis, a uh, I think it was a yeah a spectabilis that I cable that I ended up selling, and. Uh, turned into a gorgeous fish. I told the story, I think, in the last, in the last feed. And the, uh, the person I sold it to was sending me, was sending me pictures. Uh, was sending me pictures with the fish. Now, can you folks hear me OK? I'm going to bring this a little closer. Is that a little bit louder? Is that OK? Sound check, one, two, three. Are we good? No, it's not Irish coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> tempting. Irish coffee is tempting. Okay, so better sound? Thank you. Okay, good. I had it laying there, but maybe on, on me is going to be better. By the way, this is one of those Benno Cichlid t-shirts. This is the uh, Taiwan Reef that's in the tank behind me. So, uh, anyway. So, Malawi Hawks, Gars, uh, uh, Flame Tails. Uh, forever. My flavescent, my blue neon, uh, the, the ruby red, that, you know, these peacocks that you saw featured in my last video, they, uh, they actually showed color and blossomed really quick. You know, while they were uh, two to three inches, I was already seeing, right around two inches, I was starting to see signs of beautiful color. And uh, the front, the, uh, the Fusco, right here, you can see that Fusco behind me. He started showing color very, very early. That Taiwan Reef showed color crazy early. C 
crazy early where people were telling me that it was uh, possibly juiced. And so uh, he wasn't juiced. He was, <laughs> he was just a spectacular fish. He was actually, I think, a little bit, a little bit uh, uh, prettier when he was very, very young. And that might be a function of being in a tank with some very aggressive fish. Now, that's another factor to consider when you're waiting for fish to color up. Are they in a tank where they're very subdominant? And in that case, yes, they're going to, uh, they're going to take a while if, if they ever show color because uh, that's their protective device to keep from being beaten up. So um, now, while we're on the topic of fish, <laughs> anyway, what kind of coffee is this? I don't know. So my wife, Susan, buys some kind of, she's a, she's a coffee snob and she buys uh, some, some pretty good stuff. I don't know what it is. I'll tell you one thing, it's too expensive. That's for sure. <laughs> now, while we're on the topic of, uh, of fish, the Cichlid Shack, uh, James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack, he made some recommendations. I want to get your take on those recommendations. Uh, he said I should put into this tank behind me so I could, so I could spread out some of the aggression and uh, have more fish in there. He said that um, he said a, a red empress, a red empress. Tell me what your thoughts are in the chat. Red empress, a tangerine tiger, a borlei, right? Redfin borlei, and ovatus, ovatus, which I think is a type of autopharynx. I actually have one in the 100 that I think might be a female. Uh, a fire hap, a fire hap, and he felt that an albino Taiwan reef would be a great addition. So, um, so those were the uh, the suggestions he made. I, re I respect the guy. The guy knows his fish. If if you have any other suggestions for this tank behind me, that will spread spread out the aggression and uh, and that I can put in right around maybe five inches, maybe about five inches. I, I don't want to put something in there that is going to uh, challenge the uh, Venusus. The Venusus is pushing uh, nine, eight to nine inches. Where's the Venusus? Maybe up here. Anyway, the Venusus is around, uh, no, there he is. There he is patrolling. They get a little worked up when I'm in front of the tank there uh, and uh, because they, 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 they know I'm here and when fish, when you're right in front of your tank, especially if you have aggressive fish, they try and make space so they can eat. They want to be the first one to the food. So what will happen is if they think they're going to be fed, they're going to act super aggressive and start pushing other fish around. Kind of like a dog protecting its bowl. So you'll see some of that going on. The fish are knocking each other this way and that way, thinking that maybe it's feeding time. And uh, so uh, that, that's part of, part of what's behind it. So let me know what fish you think. What think, uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've had, uh, Kevin, I've had some problems with uh, borley eyes. I had to give a big, beautiful redfin borley eye that you can see in some of my earlier videos. You can see that fish, and he was, he was a spectacular fish. I had to give him away because uh, he was a jerk. Now, if I put a smaller one in that is kept, kept in line, by the uh, by the big uh, Venusus and certainly by this by this uh, eye biter right here, uh, he'll be he'll be subdued. He'll he will uh, that fish will not have a chance. I don't think because that 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 eye biter is in the number two spot and he's not going to let anybody take that away. Uh, he gets into it sometimes with the with the trout. See the trout there. That trout is actually about to be bigger or longer at least than the Venusus. Uh, trouts are amazing. They get they get you know over ten inches. So uh, so that's it on the fish. Now, Josh, uh, Josh, Josh over at um, Live Fish Direct asked me to uh, talk about a, uh, or brought up a topic, and I want to get your your take on it. He was talking about fish keeping and anxiety and depression and how 
a good number of fish keepers, the ones that, was, that have stepped up and said, I do it because it gives me some kind of peace, or it's a, it, for me it's a form of therapy, um, those, th those uh, I, I've heard it many, many times, including some prominent fish keepers that I know you know, have said that uh, part of the reason they got into fish was because it, it, it actually helps them with uh, stress and anxiety and depression. And um, the, um, there's actually some research that measured things, I believe, like um, indicators of stress, uh, blood pressure, uh, heart rate, uh, things of this nature, right? maybe certain things in the blood. They did some research and they found that, um, that people that sit and watch fish and, and uh, actually have a positive, it has a positive effect on their body. They actually get calmer. They, they have changes in things like blood pressure and things of that nature. So um, some of you might be doing that some of you might use that. I know for me, um, I find it very relaxing, very enjoyable. Uh, not just looking at the fish, but being able to change gears from my day-to-day -day routine in life, um, what I do for a living, my work, which can be stressful, um, to be able to come home and actually clean tanks, to actually clean tanks, um, it, it actually um, gets my mind sort of cleared. It clears my mind because I'm doing something completely in a different gear, completely in a different you know, lane than uh, using a whole different bandwidth than what I do on a day-to-day -day basis for a living. So um, if you've had experience with that, if, you, if you've come across research that indicates that, Share it below because I may be actually um, uh, pursuing it more in a, um, in a video that I might be releasing because there's a lot of folks out there. Uh, thank you, Duke City Aquariums. Thank you so much. There are a lot of people out there who um, need, need some kind of uh, uh, outlet. They need something to get off of the routine. And I'll tell you something. If you read, really, truly read the insert that comes with some of the anti-depression drugs, um, it'll scare the daylights out of you. Violence, depression, uh, I mean, suicidal thoughts uh, um, and violence with no history of violence, um, suicide or, or uh, violent I, you know, thinking, thoughts of suicide. Anyway, the, and, and just a long list of, of uh, side effects. So if we can, if this can help, <laughs> I would suggest try this <laughs> first. And uh, that's just my opinion, one man's opinion. Okay. Now, um, so any any ideas on that? Thoughts on that? Share them. When the when these when these uh, streams are over, I go back and and look at the comments, and I do read them. So um, I'm sorry I'm not replying to every one of you, but. Um, uh, even a risk of heart attacks. You're right. So, so you take something. It's supposed to make you be less depressed. Then you die of a heart attack. So, um, sunshine walks, vitamin D, aquariums. <laughs> before read the insert. Read the insert on anything you take. Oh my God. Um, <clears throat> some of the side effects are incredible. So, um, so I had some comments in the last in, in the last video in the last live stream. And I want, and I want to talk about them because uh, there they were some comments that I think uh, are worth uh, bringing up. Uh, Daniel Barrett, uh, how to keep beneficial bacteria safe in a canister during an extended power outage. Um, we've all had some, some power outages. Even here in Los Angeles, I had one for almost eight hours. And, um, it, you know, you, you, you start to panic. I mean, what, what's going to happen? This is where um, having a power generator, 
I know uh, Danny, uh, Dennis Rudell, Danny's Aquatics, he has a power generator. I have one that I'm going to be picking up. I'm thinking about picking up. And um, a Tangerine Tiger, Inventory King. Thank you. I am going to do that. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> so um, so the, the, uh, with a power outage, first of all, uh, if you don't have a generator, a backup generator, uh, which wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, they have ones where you can actually, um, where you can actually plug in, and so, um, and that's that's important, and um, and it's easy. You just fire them up and you plug your extension cord into them. That's pretty easy. I don't have one. I'm going to be getting one. I keep saying that. I have a friend who wants me to go pick up theirs for a good price, but in the meantime, battery powered. Um, bubblers pick up some battery powered bubblers and uh, you can crack open a canister and drop an air stone into it there's no no um, that would be a very a simple way right you open it up and just drop the air stone into that canister that should help after six to eight hours <clears throat> after six to eight hours i restarted my canisters and I had no adverse effect. If it had been longer than that, I, I'm pretty sure there would have been a, a die-off. Certainly cracked the canisters open, and um, you know, only for just for oxygenation. You can, you can of course, you can also uh, break up the surface tension with your hand in your tanks. Some people have said pour, take out some of the water and put some fresh water in after a certain number of hours. That'll break up the surface, right? And uh, a bicycle-driven generator. <laughs> yeah, I'll have Lance, Lance Armstrong come over to the house. So, uh, so six to eight hours, I did okay. I did all right. I restarted them. Everything was fine. The, uh, but longer than that, yes, get some, get some uh, bubblers battery powered bubblers throw some air stones into the canister throw an air stone into your tank uh, keep that surface breaking up for oxygen and um, that could take you for a little while be sure you have a lot of batteries all right and i hope that helped daniel barrett if you're there i i i, I uh i hope that helped and uh Let's see here. Jerry Martin. Do Malawi Hawks color slowly? I just got one that is supposed to be a male at six inches. Well, this goes back to what we talked about a little bit ago, right? Uh, Malawi Hawks are one of the fish that are notorious for taking a very long time to color up. I mean, that's I've had that experience and uh, and ultimately, finally, ended up buying uh, an adult male from uh, James Largo over at the cichlid, over at the cichlid shack. So I, I finally gave up so, uh, and bought a male. Now, at six inches, you might have two issues. One, it could be a female. I mean, you just might have a female that, that somebody mistakenly sold it to you as a male. Okay? That's a possibility. And number two, you might have a fish that is colored down because he's subdominant. Somebody is harassing that fish. Another fish is harassing him. And it's a survival mechanism for that fish to not show color. So that fish will stay, uh, will, will, will stay drab uh, just because they're in fear. So I'm going to look like a female. I'm not going to be um, a challenge. I'm not going to be a threat to anyone in this tank. I'm just going to stay nice and neutral, okay? And uh, so it's kind of a survival, a survival mechanism. I get it. And uh, but you should be seeing something—a little blue in the body, uh, an occasional, occasional specks of blue in the gill plate, you know, around the gill plates. Uh, you should be seeing something at six inches. Uh, if you're not then you know what, 
you're, you're probably, um, you, you probably have a female. And uh, Jerry, I hope you're there. You got all that. Okay. Uh, Knight Rider. Knight Rider. Now, Knight Rider, is that because of the car Knight Rider? I think there was a car that was called Knight Rider. Anyway, have you ever successfully reunited fish after they started hating each other? Um, I've reunited them and it was okay for a while. And then it started again. So, um, so my question, like if you remember, uh, again, for those of you who follow this channel, there used to be a, a Z-Rock, a very beautiful Z-Rock that is now in my 100 and um, probably a little bit of a hybrid. He's got a little bit of purple in his body. But at any rate, he was in this tank and um, one of the fish, I can't remember which one, started to beat him up. And I took him out and he recovered completely in the 100 and then I brought him back. Things were okay for a while and then he got beat up. And uh, hello, James. I hope you caught the section where I was talking about you earlier. If you didn't, you're going to have to watch the replay. And that way I get another view and that's what it's all about. <laughs> and be sure to give it a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, I'm just joking. So um, the autopharynx tetrastigma, that whole episode I'm going through right now with a beat up uh, tetrastigma in this little side tank right here, that is recovering. Uh, that fish was removed, put in the 100 gallon, uh, recovered, became uh, became uh, beautiful again. Was reintroduced to this tank and worked. It worked until it didn't work, and then he got beat up again. So, um, Night Rider, I'm going to have to say, um, I'm going to say no. I have not successfully over a long term taken out a fish and then reintroduced him and had it work out for me. Now, if you've had, if you, those of you watching right now, if you've had a different experience with that, go ahead and uh, chat, uh, note it in the chat. I'd love to hear about it, okay? Now, uh, another comment. I noticed I, another comment I noticed in the chat last week was that someone said that uh, Pima and Mela, uh, the Pima and Melafix products, which uh, when I went to the talk delivered by Corey, he he concurred with my observations, with my conclusions that Mela, the, the Melafix and Pima Fix uh, don't really do much uh, when it comes to. Uh, eradicating or stopping disease and someone made a comment that it was a preventative not a treatment so um, I went ahead and, um, and you know I've got these bottles I have all these bottles of stuff if you're in Southern California if you're near me in Arcadia California and you want bottles of this stuff come over and I will give them to you for free you can have them okay <laughs> Pima fix, okay? Treats fungal infections. Rapidly treats fungal infections on body and fins. Safe for delicate fish. Melafix. Heals bacterial infections. Heals bacterial infections. So, no. It, it, it's not a uh, preventative. It's not like a uh, probiotic where you're trying to take steps to make your fish, uh, I guess you could use it for that, I guess, I mean, I don't, and, uh, but that's not what they advertise themselves as, and, and when I used it uh, before, for things that looked like were being described on the back here, you see like, like fin rot, and, and, and uh, like a velvet around the lips, and, you know, I, I used, I used it for what it looked like was being described, and all it did was it allowed the uh, bacterial infection uh, in in the fish to become worse and worse, uh, and then I had a uh, I had a dumpster fire on my hands, and then I needed to get uh, I needed to get the fr the Fritz Mardell uh, you know antibiotic uh, gram 
negative antibiotic. I keep, currently I keep Furon, API Furon. I keep that on hand, I have boxes of it. I also keep API General Cure, General Cure on hand. I also keep uh, Cordon, uh, Cordon, uh, Cordon Ikatak, I keep that on hand. There's certain medications I always keep. And, uh, but if you want some Pima and some Mela and you, you think it'll help, you can have mine. Come on over, you can have it, okay? So, uh, now, a couple things. I've been meaning to give you this tip for a while, and, uh, and, and I haven't, but, and, and now the, the summer is almost over, and uh, the hot weather is starting to, uh, to go away, unless you're, you're in Australia or someplace like that and your summer is about to begin, and I, knew I, I know I do have some, some folks in Australia that watch the channel. And, uh, but at any rate, um, sometimes it's hard to control the temperature of your tank. And, uh, and the, uh, this is a product that you can attach to the side of the tank. And it blows air over the top of your tank. This product is from Zoomed. I picked it up at the, uh, the American Cichlid Association uh, meeting in Houston. And uh, it's a Zoomed product. There's a little plug-in jack here. I put this on top of the 100. I just rested it. I just rested it on top of the 100 under the canopy, turned it on. And my, my tank went down about three to four degrees, about three degrees um, overnight. And then, and then it stayed down. It was getting up into the 82, 83. Um, and so I used this product. I put it on top. I had it blowing, I had it blowing water, or rather air, over the top of the aquarium. And it actually cooled things down. So um, check it out. It's from Zoomed. It was not sent to me. Uh, Zoomed, if you're listening, you should have sent this to me because I recommend <laughs> I paid for this. <laughs> now, the only thing you'll, the only problem you'll run into when you're running air over your tanks, and you know this if you run a fan over your tanks, is that you'll accelerate uh, evaporation. If you're accelerating evaporation, you should probably put an air stone in your tank, and um, which isn't a bad idea anyway. Uh, if your temperatures start to rise, you, you should definitely put an air stone in there. But also, I just picked up this product, and um, I know Dennis Rudell, Denny's Aquatics. If you're listening, you know about this. This is a uh, top, a automatic top off. This is an automatic top off box, and what it does, it has this little float. This goes, this goes on the bottom of it, and uh, what it does is it you set it so that the water level. The water level, when the water level drops, a certain, when it drops, water starts pouring out of the box and it, and it tops off your tank. And then when it, the water level comes back up, it shuts off. So it's a real simple automatic top off unit. This is a very inexpensive one. It doesn't hold a tremendous amount of water, but it's, um, you can see here, it holds enough so that between water changes in the tank behind me, I don't have to top it off during the week. One of the complaints people have with, with uh, sump systems, let me put this thing down. One of the complaints people have with sump systems is that you do get a lot of evaporation uh, because you have a lot of surface over the sump uh, that the water is, you know, it's just evaporating. It's moving, it's evaporating. And of course you have the, the large surface of the tank. I have plexiglass cut pieces of plexiglass over the openings in the tank and I have it over the um, openings of the sump where, where I can have it, where it's possible. And uh, that helps with evaporation. But during the week sometimes I still need to add some water. So that auto top off is going to help and, um, and a little more coffee, it's going to help. It is coffee and cichlids after all. So uh, 
Let's take up some of the questions on the chat. And um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them now. And I will go ahead and, uh, and take them up if you have any questions. By the way, thank you so much on the Super Chats. Those are very appreciated. And, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily promote them that much. And it's, uh, you know, but I love that you like the channel enough that you, that you throw something at it. And uh, I like that. Thank you so much. It's very appreciated. And um, any small HAP ideas? Well, you know, the, the, um, the HAP ideas, I think the Z-Rock, the Z-Rock would be a good HAP, you know, the, um, I, I, had, I had good luck uh, in having the Z, I've had, I'm having good luck right now in the Z-Rock uh, with, with the Peacocks. So Z-Rocks are good. The Autopharynx Tetrastigma was a great, a great fish. That's a great HAP with the Peacocks. So uh, consider those two, the Autopharynx Tetrastigma and the uh, Z-Rock, the Z-Rock, beautiful uh, fish with a orange blaze on the forehead that uh, sometimes that blaze will run from the top of the uh, top lip all the way over the uh, dorsal, all the way to the tail. Uh, Adam C, if Adam C is still here, uh, Adam C had, I believe, uh, one of the most beautiful Xerox I've ever seen. And uh, I tried to get him to send it to me on numerous occasions, and he wouldn't send it. But uh, uh, no, I think a 75, I think he would be okay in a 75. I think 75 would be probably the smallest you would want to have him in. But I, I don't think it would be uh, too restrictive. Um, look, ideally, we, we should all have 125s if we're going to keep cichlids, except maybe the little shell dwellers. But uh, uh, I think a 125 should be, you know, a 60 while you're growing them out, and then eventually a 125. And uh, Adam C. says, if I drive over. <laughs> okay, thank you, Adam C. I'm, I might take you up on that, you know. I'm getting close to... Uh, I'm getting close to uh, retirement, and I'm going to be driving a lot. So am I? <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let's see if I can if I can scroll some of these some of these comments here. Uh, let's see here. Small haps. I'm going to uh, scroll through so you're going to see my fat finger. Let's see here. Greetings from Hey Nantucket. Broken Texan. What are you doing in Nantucket? Um, How do you clean your tank after an ick breakout? After an ick breakout, okay. Well, you know, uh, during ick, uh, during ick, you should be uh, vacuuming pretty regularly, if not every day, every other day, because uh, take a look at the cycle that ick goes through, right? It, it, you have, you have these these things that attached to the fish, they fall off, and then they, they, they hatch in the substrate, and then they wiggle back up and attach to the fish. So uh, you should be vacuuming very regularly when there's ick, and, uh, as well as treating. And, then, uh, and so if you're doing that, and, and the ick, and you've raised the temperature of the tank, and you've treated it, some people use salt, um, the miracle of salt, so, uh, I, I use cordon ick attack that's worked for me. It's very gentle. You can use it with scaleless fish. It doesn't matter. Um, but at any rate, the, the, uh, if you're doing those steps you're, and the ick is finally you know, overcome, you should be fine for fish. You should be fine to put fish, fish back in. So um, there wouldn't be any other special. Uh, I poked you in the eye yard, bummer. <laughs> I meant to do that. Let me see. Getting five. Well, you know, I mean, you got to, someone asked about controlling ammonia and nitrates and, and it's, uh, Daniel, it's standard, it's standard stuff. I mean, you've got to, 
Uh, first of all, be sure you're treating the water uh, correctly with your Prime or, or your, uh, uh, you know, your Fritz turbo, uh, turbo or whatever it is you're using to get that tank going. Be sure it's an established tank and uh, be, sure you're doing, uh, be, be sure you're doing your water changes and test your water. If you don't want to go through the whole rigmarole of a test kit, uh, buy yourself some, uh, some test strips and, uh, and uh, you know, do your water changes, you know, just, just, that, that, just the usual stuff, you know, uh, that, that's the way to go with it. Just do the usual. So um, let's see here. Let me see if I can pull up these, let's see if I can pull up these comments without having to poke people in the eye. Let's see here. Bear with me. I'm going to go back here a little bit. Ultimate fish keeping show. APC unit is a good backup. It does not require petrol or anything. It just plugs in the main socket and it will switch on automatically in the event of a power outage. Uh, Ultimate Fish Keeping Show, first of all, thank you for being here. And, and uh, how long will that unit run? The only, the only misgiving I had about those units when I looked into them was that they would run for about an hour uh, and sometimes less, depending on how much you were pulling from them. Um, do you know how long they'll run? Because that, that's a great alternative. You know, you're not you're not using uh, petrol, or like we say on this side of the pond, you're not using gas, and uh, and uh, it's a lot easier thing to have, and it's automatic. So if you're not home, it has the advantage of of uh, being okay when you're you know running when you're not home. Uh, let's see here. Yard Bomber says he has a monster Jaguar that's 11 inches, can't find a suitable tank mate. He's already destroyed a 12 inch Oscar and a six inch Red Devil. I've got a feeling that that Jaguar is probably gonna live his life alone. I mean, you see that if you go through YouTube and you look at Jaguars, right? Dove eyes, things like, they're alone. They're usually alone in the tanks. Um, they're just a bit, uh, they're not the most social fish. They're a bit antisocial, so. <laughs> Sharpie says that in the UK, the most powerful thing they can get uh, along the line of uh, medicines are things like API General Cure. Uh, Sharpie's models and aquatics, uh, we're having a crackdown here in the United States. The FDA is removing the strong antibiotics from the fish keeping community. And so this is why the, the whole, uh, 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 an important part of the um, talk was uh, was about using salt, having to go back to old school methods like salt, because some of the more uh, some of the stronger antibiotics are going to be uh, denied, are going to be uh, we're not going to be allowed to access them. I mean, we need gram negative. We need gram negative, um, you know. And you have to look at expiration dates. I, I would say I would say go ahead and stock up on them, but in some cases you're going to end up with some expired. Uh, medications. Uh, there is, uh, right now on eBay, um, there, is, there are vendors that sell flake food infused with gram-negative uh, antibiotics. I had success with that. Between the, uh, the Fritz Mardell and the food the, uh, that the fish were eating uh, which, with gram-negative antibiotic, it stopped cholomeris cold. So I ended up with um, a 50% loss of stock, which sounds horrendous, and yes, it was horrendous, but if you Google Colomaris, you will find that it is not uncommon for a 100% loss of all stock on a Colomaris infection uh, breaking out. So uh, uh, Fritz is a company, uh, Fritz Aquatics is a company that makes, uh, and Fritz and Mardell are a company that make uh, aquarium and fish care products. I believe they might be out of Texas, I'm not sure, but they, uh, I believe Jay Wilson, 
Jay Wilson is associated uh, with them, but I use, that's what I used to, uh, I use the Fritz Aquatic products uh, to stop the uh, Colomeris in my tank, and I used the gram-negative antibiotic-infused food that I picked up on eBay. And, uh, but again, you stock up on that stuff, it expires, and it's, uh, it becomes worthless. Uh, Caitlin Douglas, contrary to popular belief, you get more evaporation when, water, when the water temp is much higher than room temp, which is all, uh, all of us pretty much, nobody wants to keep their room at 78, 80. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, would, I would concur with that. I mean, we have, uh, you know, things that are trying to find balance. The room and the tank are trying to, they're trying to equalize, right? They're trying to find some balance between them. So you are going to lose, you're going to lose uh, water in your tanks. And I have that, uh, that occurring back here. That's why I picked up that little top off unit that I showed you. So it can just be adding, adding water, uh, treated water to the tank. Francis Arroyo, thanks. And once I convince my husband I'm upgrading. Um, what worked for me, Francis, was uh, negotiations and compromise. Negotiations and compromise. <laughs> this tank behind me, I had to paint, I had to first paint the wall behind it. 100 in the, uh, in the other room. I had to uh, paint an entire wall in a very long room and then a, a, a wall that runs at a right angle along with trim in a different color. And uh, it was, uh, but you know what? I enjoyed doing it and, uh, and I was able to get, up, get two tanks put in. So <laughs> there's got to be something your husband wants. And, <laughs> and those of you uh, commenting, keep it clean. Keep it clean. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see what else we had. Jaguars don't do well with other... Steve's... Uh, Aquatopia, jaguars don't do well with that. Yep, they don't. They're, they're, they're uh, antisocial. Uh, <laughs> beautiful fish. Absolutely beautiful. Andrea, hello. Bakersfield, been there many times. My boys used to uh, play travel ball baseball, and I would go to Bakersfield quite a bit. Um, Okay, so I'll tell you what, that pretty much wraps it up. Any, any comments that you want to add? I really, I want to thank those of you who super chatted um, and those of you who gave, the, uh, who gave the video a thumbs up. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you who watch this on the replay, what is super chat? Super chat is where people can pay something during the, uh, during the video to help support the channel. In my case, the purchase of more fish and uh, thank you so much for those of you that did that. Uh, hello from Malibu, California. Uh, love Malibu. I go to the uh, pier on a fairly regular basis and I eat at The Farm. You're probably familiar with the restaurant called The Farm. Wonderful place. Okay, so I think with that being said, there's no other products I need to cover here. Do one of you have any, do one, any of you have any other any questions for me? Are you kidding me? Tyrannical? My favorite fish store in Santa Ana? Did you not watch the Cory live stream? <laughs> if you're in Santa Ana, go to Nolan's, Nolan's Aquariums. Nolan's Aquarium. That guy has a great collection, but what I like most about him is he loves what he does. Uh, and he's fair and he's uh, committed to high quality fish. And one of the things that turns me off when I go into a, a fish store is dirty tanks. And I know that they have a lot of tanks to take care of, um, but um, it's almost like, like imagine going into a clothing store and the clothing uh, that's, that they have on display has like ketchup stains 
and uh, you know grease stains on it uh, I mean would you go back to that store I don't think so so um, I know these guys work hard and uh, I know it's not easy running a fish store and I know that the that the uh, margins on profit are pretty slim and they have to kind of, they have to stock so much stuff and it's hard work I get it but um, one thing I like about Nolan is his tanks are pristine they are you would drink water out of one of his tanks that's how clean they are other uh, aquarium shops I've gone to you would not you wouldn't drink the water and you would not bring those fish home because you're you're certain that you're bringing home a parasite or something like that so um, so at any rate ultimate fish keeping thank you for stopping by my friend so um, yes Nolan's in Santa Ana um, you know you also have other choices down there right you, you saw what I, I visited uh, I visited 405 tropicals you also have strictly strictly fish I believe is down there they have some good selections okay but but for me it, it's uh, I'm partial I like Nolan uh, he's a good guy so um, thank you for stopping by yard bomber and anything else any other comments any other questions they're popping up I'm reading them as they come up and uh, so if, we, if nothing else then I want to thank all of you who have sat in and hung in there with me and uh, I'll be emailing you soon about the VC 10 uh, please do I definitely want uh, if you want to email me you can my email is very very creative you would never guess it it's ben.ochart at yahoo so there you have it do not spam me those of you listening <laughs> but go ahead you can email me there's no secret it's on my youtube channel ben.ochart at yahoo okay all right thank you everybody for sitting in uh, you are very appreciated you rock my friends i really do mean that and uh, Thank you for stopping by today. Bye-bye.